God we believe Yes, we can see it That wonders are still what to do And bodies are still being raised My giants are still being slain God we believe Yes, we can see it That wonders are still what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do Set our hearts on you, Lord Come and do what you do Cause we Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you would like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning, a little while possible, in the midst of the mess, in the midst 
of the mess. Any of y'all ever been in a mess? Ever had a mess in your life? Come on, you ever seen? You ever met people now? They got a name for them. They call them messy. Well, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> some of y'all, I know some of y'all might be sitting next to them, so you don't say nothing. And I understand. I understand. I understand politics. I understand that. You know, and as we look at Scripture, we'll find out that in the midst of every mess, you'll find that there's a test. You know, sometimes we fail the test. Anybody ever failed the test in the midst of the mess? Amen. Well, I have, or I'm going to tell you that. But, but you know what, what the, really the deal is right now, do we really want to pass the test? I say, I'm ready to go. You know, I had, I had to get past that. I had to get past that not wanting to get through the mess. I just didn't want a mess. I just didn't want to put up with it. I didn't want to do it. Let me tell you, I found out I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I found out some things are just not my business. I found out some things are the will of God, and he's going to do it no matter what I say. And then I need to learn to go along with it and be just, just to, to have, act like I ask him to do it when it's his will. He's doing his own thing. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know that the main reason, now I find the main reason in the Word of God is the same reason that I find in the natural. And you know when people fail to uh, test, you know what they usually fail to do? And they usually fail to study, you know, or listen to the teacher. I mean, you know that, that, that in the midst of the mess, there's a test. And let me tell you what, in the midst of that thing, let me tell you, we can have victory if we choose to have it, if we work toward the victory. Now, I'm not that guy of automatic victory. I'm that guy that has victory all the time, and I'm willing to work with God the way God wants to do that. Y'all listening to me? See, some people will fall out of faith if it doesn't happen when, how, and just the color they want it to. Come on. You know, you, you, when you know the main reason is they do, you know. And so, you know, that, that, or they don't listen to the teacher. So, so this morning, and granted this morning, somebody in this room, maybe half, maybe three quarters or everyone, may not be going in some kind of test or may not be in a mess this morning, but I want you to go ahead and take this word, this seed of this word, and put it in your heart and go ahead and cover it up. You know why? Because things happen. I'm going to go, I'm going to be trained up and go up, you know. Somebody, well, I ain't never going to go there. I ain't going to never do You know, I tell Sister One when I was a kid, a I, 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 few times you could get me quiet and get me still. We'd go to the auditorium, and they would do those nature videos. Man, they'd go all over the world. and They'd, they'd go to, to, to Yellowstone. Or I, I'd just get up on that front row, and I, and I said, you know, ever since a child, I marveled at the wonder of God. I, just, I, I knew from a, a child that there was something greater and something bigger. Can you say amen? You know, if you, you got to understand, you, you might not be in something, but God's still great all the time. But sometimes we forget his majesty when we're going through that mess. Can you say amen? You know? Do you remember that day you was just going along, seemed like you was tending your business, nothing to, and looked like you got in a mess that only God could get you out of? Whoo! Man, I said, Lord. You know, we've had, if I said over the years, I've had people tell us, you know, it, uh, when we were ministry for 38 years, 30-something years, that, that uh, 34 years, excuse me, uh, that they said that the Lord sent them down there. And I'm wondering what I did that the Lord sent them down there. I was wondering what I did. I repent. <laughs> So sometimes people are your test. Sometimes people are your mess. Sometimes what's happening around you, come on, <laughs> you know that. But, you know, when I, I'm talking about the mess, I'm talking about spiritual, physical, mental, financial, emotional, kids, greats, grand. I'm talking about them all this morning. Can somebody say amen? You know, most people in the mess today is because of what? That, what, what? They're because of wrong choices, wrong hangouts, wrong feelings. You'll get in a mess with them wrong feelings. You'll get in a mess with the wrong hangouts. You'll get in a mess with wrong choices. You know, some people are in a mess today and have a long time been in a mess. You know why? Because they listen to one person themselves. Whoa. I felt good the other day, man. I had a, a lady that made me feel good at Walmart. I went up and she was talking to herself. I walked up and she kind of embarrassed. I said, that's all right if you get good answers. She said, yeah. I said, and it sounds like you trust the person you're talking to. She said, yes. So like, <laughs> she wasn't embarrassed. And sometimes, sometimes you got to talk it up. You got to speak it out. Amen. And, and you know what, what? She's talking to somebody or herself. I said, at least you're talking to somebody you trust. Hello. 
Now, me, I'd be guilty of talking to people I wouldn't trust, but I still talk to them, you know what I'm saying? But, but in the midst, have you ever come to that place that, but it seems like you got a problem on every side? You ever had that mess look like you fixed this? and get? Now, I tell you what, man, when I get ready to fix something and do something, I'm that guy that keeps on, and I, I, you can't give me a paintbrush, I'll run, you can run me out of the house with a, with a paintbrush and puke. Now, if you get me a puke, it's going to be twice as much. And the reason I, I, a paintbrush, I can't never get off of it. I keep, keep doing this. And after a while, I get a little bit, and now it's on the baseboard. Now, I got to do something with the baseboard. I got to get the baseboard clean. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Some things I just keep trying to fix. And the more you try to fix some things, the bigger mess you'll make them. They'll turn into a bigger mess. So I found out with that painting, leave it alone or come back and finish it later. <laughs> it might be later next year. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? We knew a family that moved into a new house and they never put, <laughs> they never put light switch covers on the, on the wall and on the, and on the wall sockets. <laughs> 20 years later, there's still no sockets, no covers on it. We wonder about that, amen. But some people are in a mess today because we wanted things the way we wanted them. We wanted our way or the highway. In other words, you're not budging. You know, sometimes you need to budge. Sometimes you need to move from your position. Sometimes, look at me, sometimes we just plain wrong. I know that's hard to believe, men. <laughs> Ladies, I know you know. <laughs> we always know. We'll preach on them ladies next week. <laughs> but you know, no matter how we get there, no matter how they got there, no matter how you're today, no matter how it may work out someday, we serve the God that can get us out of our mess if we desire for him to do so. Can you say amen? I found out over the years, and people have prayed today were blue in the face. People have prayed until they're wore out trying to make things happen. Let me, some people don't want good in their lives. Some people don't want to live for the Lord. Some people don't want things to change that you're praying for. No, you are, you're part of the mess now. Well, I want you to know God's not working against their, their desires. God's not working against their will. Why would, why would we pray? Why would we work in it? But most people are in the mess today, but again, because of wrong choices, wrong hangouts, and wrong feelings. I tell you, your hangout's going to determine your come out. Too many, many times. You know, in the midst of this, you ever, you ever felt like there's no place to go? Let me, let me tell you, you ever felt like you jammed up, you like, like you just don't know? Let me tell you what, God knows when you don't know. God knew when you thought you did know. You know, God has a plan. You know what God is? God's the mess fixer. <laughs> I tell you, he's, they ought to have a show called The Mess Fixer. And it'd just be all miracles and things God in correction and direction. Come on. Amen. Bless the mess. <laughs> Let me put that note down. We don't worry about it. But some people are, are in, in the mess they are because they, uh, you know, they, they seem like they was a really good idea. You know, uh, it, it, you know isn't it a matter of this that, that people who do really well and you're doing good, but you know what happens is that influence of other people, fear and assumption, and things begin to move in, and we begin to listen to those things over the voice of God. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? Don't you go with me this morning at Exodus 14. Exodus 14, we know the story. Exodus 14, I'm going to start about the eighth verse. We know that the children of Israel at this time had been delivered. They'd been set free for a few feet. For a little ways, a few days. And you know that, that when, God, when God gets ready to do something, you got to, I found out, that, that when God's doing something, he has a greater plan than your first step. God has great plans. God, God's starting where we're going now. You know what God does? He, he ever heard somebody say baby steps first? There's something to that in the spirit. Move just a little bit, pick that foot up, get, get going. And let me tell you, when God was moving, God, God was bringing miracles. God was bringing, bringing frogs and lice. He was, bring, he was getting the children set free, and they were moving. And God was moving mightily. You know, it's after the time we see God move mightily in our life, we need to pay attention and stay in trim where God's going and follow him and watch the voices. Can you say amen? Exodus 14, 8. And the Lord hardened, hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Everybody said a high hand. That means they were leaving confident, defiantly. They went out, they were doing, everything was good. It's not hard to get people to shout when everything's good. 
It's not hard. You know, some people complain about the steak being too thick. That's not my problem around here. Don't buy cake, buy steak. Can you see? Amen. A high hand, it means lofty. A lofty, it means presumptuous. They went out proud. You say, well, is that good or is that bad? Well, well you tell me. Are they proud? Uh, are there ways that God's delivered them or that they've got a hand over Pharaoh and got out? You know, it could be conceived either way. But what they did, they went out with a high hand. They, they went out that it was good and in the knife burst. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his armies, and overtook them and encamped by the sea besides. And this is a Miller translation. It's Hapharath Belsephar. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Somebody said they starting out right. <laughs> they starting out right now. They starting out, but, but the cries was more like a squeak. It's more, ah, Lord. It's not, oh, Lord, I see you're going to do something. You did stuff in Egypt. That's not, that's not the same creek. But, but they are crying out to the Lord. Well, let me tell you, if you start out straight, you can end up straight. <laughs> but, you know, it's to creek, and, and it means they can come into a congregational wise. It means it was big, and to be so afraid. You know what? It said they were so afraid. You know what happens when people, when they don't know what God's doing, when they do not walk in the peace of God, when they, they do not allow God to be in their lives, they begin to assume Begin to assume. And when the children of Israel came, uh, were pursued by, by Egypt, they begin to react. You know, your assumption is not reality. How many of you know that? And that's my re- now, now, for some people, when the Egyptians pursued them and looked like they wanted to be trouble, I guarantee you they had some guys in the crowd that said, I hope they try something. This is, I've been waiting on this. And the others are not looking. Y'all listening to me? And some assume, you know, and they begin, you know, that note that people are in the midst of the mess. You can see their hearts. Amen. You know, when people get in the mess and get the test, you begin to see their hearts and, and you do that. And, and this is what they'll do. They'll trip up, fell up and cuss. And they'll say, they got me cussing. Oh, they did. Well, let's see if we can get two more on each side of them and get you praising. Amen. <laughs> kind of doubt it. <laughs> You know, it's the devil's playground. He delights in the rejecting of God's word and begin to believe that, that, that he's not in the relationship. You know what Jesus wants us to do is, is encourages us to reach to the Father, not build walls away from him and take our way away from him. But I want you to know they begin to assume. You know, that's what most people do. And they'll just start down the road. I tell you, I live by it because it's true. What I say is one of my go-tos. But all things work to the good of them. Love God and are called according to his purpose. But let me tell you what my Jerry saying is. My Jerry saying is nothing is as good or as bad as it first appears but Jesus. Now, now, you can take that, and they used to say up front and I, up home, I don't guess they say it down here, and you can put that in your pipe and smoke it, they say. Well, I'm not encouraging pipe smoking today, or bong smoking, nothing. I'm just kidding. But you know what? If we come to that place to believe that, that God's with us, we'll come to the reality of who he is and know it. Let God be our reality. And the reality not be assumption, but let the reality be what we know God has done. He's just pulled off ten miracles and got us right here. Ten miracles, man. Years and years of bondage. You know, it's hard. It, it, it took 40 years to get Egypt out of them. When you put them in the wilderness, they had to track around for 40 years just to get. It didn't take that long to get them out of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of them. I mean, you know, sometimes we come to church with Egypt in us. And I'm not talking about a sinful nature. I'm talking about assumption that, that it's going to get bad. What if we do? What if we go? Well, we've got to be careful. The devil might. Let me tell you what. The devil's going to might whether we do what we do or not. Quit putting him in the front. Quit giving him more power than he has. Can you? Hey, don't, be, don't have a Hollywood. I mean a Hollywood. They got Jesus. They got the devil and, the, and, the, and God up here. No, it's the devil here and God up here. You, if, you took a, if you took a circle and, and you took a circle to try the size of the world and let that represent, let it represent God and take a BB, that's the devil. Come on, somebody. Well, you just where your life's at. You know. But assumption can, you know what? We know what assumption does. Assumption uh, ne- never loves, 
Assumption never is in faith. Assumption is already received what you think it is, what I think it is. So why don't we have the correct assumption that God is? You know, that, that, that love always uh, uh, loves. Can you say amen? It always loves true love. You know, but sometimes, you know, we get in that place that when things happen, we get that pressure. And, you know, let me tell you what assumption does. Assumption brings undue stress, anxiety. It brings insecurities in people's lives. Whenever they get there and they don't know, they just start filling in the blanks. Start filling in the blanks. Start filling in the blanks. And people don't fill them in with good stuff. They fill it in with the other stuff. Can you say amen? You know, sometimes uh, that people get all, want to write their story. Give me a box of colors and I'll sit down. I mean, come on. I'm just going to go ahead and... St- now, I'll tell you, I was a bad boy. I used to color out of the lines. I'm a little better now. <laughs> I got to color in the lines. I mean, y'all know what you do. But assumptions awfully, all, often filled with falsehoods and half-truths. It is true that you've got a problem. It, it is true that the enemy is out there. It is true that we've been set free. It is true. And, and it is true that there's something that wants to put us back into the bondage. But we've got to know in whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And when we know that, it changes our life. It changes our game. It changes where we're And then the 11th verse, they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, Thou hast taken us out to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Now they said there was no graves. And you know what the name of that place is? Egypt is the, known as the land of tombs. The land of tombs. Now you see how people start, will start missing and start assuming and start getting away from God. And, and, now, and now they start building a case against Moses. And he said there wasn't any graves. No, there wasn't only any graves. They were throwing your babies in the Nile and the alligators were eating up all the boys in the Nile. Yeah. See, there's some things really going on that they just put out of their head and they begin to see what fed them their own wants. Twelve first, he said, is this not the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? There's no proof. There's not, not a place in the word for this. But, but Moses doesn't dispute it. Neither does he dispute the other things they said. He said, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Let me tell you now, you, you, you might as well go ahead and, and, and put up a fight. You might as well go ahead and know that it's going to be a struggle. You know what people don't want to do? People don't want to struggle. People don't want to suffer. Now, the Bible says if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. But it doesn't mean in that like way that you're talking about, that, that you assume is. It, it, <laughs> there's that word, <laughs> assume is. You know, that, that God, you know, that their fear, they cried out to God. This made sense. And their words to Moses had little faith or no faith, but a, not a really a, a loss in confidence in God. Yeah, no more, you know, it would be unreasonable for us to think that Moses had planned to bring them out into the wilderness and let them die. You know, so be, here we go. Well, you know, Lord, I've been struggling. I just don't see like you care, Lord. Looks like they got it. Wait a minute. When they were struggling, didn't make you cry then. Come on. He's telling Moses, what well, did they? You know what some people, it's reasonable to understand that. But in the midst of all this going on, let me tell you, the excuse and the blame fell upon Moses. But, but you know what Moses did? He, sta- he stayed the course, amen. You know, when things go south, you can really find out people's mindset. You know what they thought? They thought it would be better to be a victim in Egypt than to fight for being an overcomer in the new land. Oh, we're, we're in the wilderness. We ain't, we ain't made across the Red Sea yet. We're really in need. Let me look at it. It means some of them weren't like us. A lot of them were not where they could be yet. And they got to that place, and they assumed. They filled in the blanks. They said this, and, and it would be ludicrous, ludicrous for us to think that, that, that Moses just led them out there. But they thought it was better to live in the victim life than to live in the overcomer story. Think about it. What, it's better to be free than it is to be in bondage. Can you say amen? You, we got to make an effort to be free. Got to make an effort to pass the test. Yeah, all in the midst of it, we, we got to hold on. And they're telling him, like, you know, it'd be better us go back. But let me tell you, look at me. They already took your place in the bar. They already took your place on the corner. They already took your place over that other place. They already took your place. Ain't no use go back there. There's no place in Egypt for you. Your job's been dull. 
You'd have to have that job over there. It's not your job. That's when you go there and they look at you funny. I've walked over to some of them trying to witness and they'll look at me and say, Brother Jay, why are you here? Like, have you backslid? <laughs> now I'm here to talk to you. Oh. Now, I wasn't that bad, but I weren't that good. <laughs> hey, who said that amen back? Who was that? That's that joy. Of course. 13. And Moses said unto the people, now, now, now he, he, he's, he's really now coming to the true problem. He, he's finding it. And, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. And the Egyptians who you have seen this day, you shall see them again no more. And the church said forever. You know, yeah, come on now, what are you telling what, what is that? You know what he said? Oh, y'all can do better than that, would you? Saints won. Super Bowl. Woo! Woo, feeling bad. I shoot good. That's my new shooting shoes. Shooting shoes. But you know what he told me? He said the problem was fear. He said fear. He, he said fear not stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. And when he says, the, how many of you know the Egyptians still are in history? How many of you know the Egyptians, we still see them in Israeli history? But we never see them exercising power over God's children anymore. He's trying to tell him, you're not going to ever see him like this again. I want, to know, I want you to know that when we get to that place, we have to move past where the enemy is, and we have to continue on knowing that God is well able. Amen. We have to do something about our fears. We, and when he's talking about staying still, he's talking about take a position, take a place. You know, you can take somebody like this, you can push them over, but you can take somebody that plants their feet, it's hard to move them. Oh, you may push against, but you'll be hard to move. Can somebody say amen? You know, at this point, Moses, you know, I believe that Moses had no more idea what God was about to do than you and I do oftentimes. And because we don't know exactly what God, we'll make our faith confessions. We don't know exactly what he's going to do, but we need to stand still, not have fear. Moses said, this is the key to this thing. So Moses must who had squelched his fear. Moses must have made a decision to stand. You know, that's what we do sometimes. You know, you, what you got to do is put them in. You got to put your feet down and hold on. It didn't come on God. God knows what's going to happen. It's not, God's not surprised today. Can somebody say amen? I preach a message. God's not surprised. Amen. You know, but, but in this time that, that, that all Moses knew uh, was that God, what God had done. And he doesn't give them a big plan. He doesn't say that. He, he's like us. He, he's been through some stuff and he didn't know. You know, Jesus is all we need. You know what I found out? No, look at me. It's a song, but it's true. It's a, probably a verse in a song. It, if it's not, it ought to be. I didn't find out what I had to Jesus till I didn't have anything. I have Jesus. I have everything. I mean, you know that. But why we got to go so late to figure that out? How you got to get on the bottom to figure out that's what he is, can you think? But Moses, hang on, Moses, Moses was holding in on. You know, just know that, that in the midst of their mess, you know, and all that was going on, you got to understand you're not alone. Just then when the enemy comes and the children of Israel start crying, and it looked like Moses didn't even know himself. He, he's waiting for direction. And I tell you, you, you got to stop tripping. <laughs> Some people's tripping. Or the Greek word, freaky outer. <laughs> I guess that's a Greek word, freaky out. Mm -hmm. You know what, people, they start tripping before things get bad. They start making the bad. They start assuming. But Moses started believing. Can you say amen? You don't need a lot of details. Now he's coming. Now he's coming. 14th verse. He's getting ready to go now. And he says right now, he said, the Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore Christ thou unto me speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. And if I said something, that is, the Lord will fight for you while, while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. He said, you got to quit freaking out. How many of y'all know when you get upset, it just makes things worse? I live in it. I live in it. Nothing is as good as bad as it first appears. Amen. 
I get a call back every now and then. You know, I get a call back. You was right about that. I get a call back every now and then. But let me tell you what, what Moses knew was that God was. Then, then he got to that place. And, and he began to talk to Moses. He told you, he said, don't talk to me about it. Talk to your kids about it. Tell them to go forward. You know what? I can read this in. This is Jerry translation. Y'all not waiting on me. I'm waiting on y'all. No, I'm not waiting on me. So tell the children, this, this is the prerequisite for being ready, and that is to be still and shut up. And you know, sometimes we, we can't be quiet about it. Instead of can't stop praising his name, I just can't stop complaining the ning. I just can't stop complaining the ning. Can't, don't, put, don't work that in there. I'm telling you, that, don't. That's close. Probably not, David. You know what, what we need to do is deal with the real problem, and the real problem was fear, restlessness, and assumption. Fear, restlessness, and assumption. I'm fear. You get you going. Doing anything else. And so Moses says something to him. He, he, he tells him, to, that, 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 but God's telling him, well, well get him to move, and I'm going to move. You ain't waiting on me. Proverbs 17, 20 says, Proverbs 17, 28 says, even a fool, when he holds his peace, he is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed as a man of understanding. He said, just shut up and go along, and you'll be all right. Now, it goes back to something my mama never said. <laughs> my mama never. Now, I don't say it. Now. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes what you say, it comes back and bites you. What you say comes back to you. Amen. And that, Now, look, we, we, we soon find that. Now, God's ready. He has a plan, and, and he's willing to do it, but the people have to. Now, it falls, I, God could have done anything at any time, but he speaks to Moses. He said, but lift up thy rod. And stretch thy hand over the sea and divide it. He did not say, I'll divide it. He said, and divide it. He said, and the children of Israel shall go. That's a prophetic word. Shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, you know, he said, now lift up. That means to stretch out. You know, you, do you remember anything God has done for you? Do you remember? Oh, you need to stretch that out in the night that God was good to you in the day. You need to stretch that out. And with something, he said, take that stick. Come on. That's been a miracle working staff. Take that what you know I'm working with. Take the word of God. Take the scripture. Take what you know God said. He said, and stick that out over your problem and hold it out over there. And that's going to take some de- It's going to take some dedication. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to hold her up. Can you say amen? You know what? We want God to split it. We want God to stay. We're going to go lay down. <laughs> and I'm looking for something to be dry through here. And if you don't mind, Lord, if you could just run a little strip of blacktop through here, <laughs> I'd be happier, but I'm going to go lay down. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> but lift up. Take that rod. You know, the same thing that, 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 when that, you know, those cats thought they was cool. They throwed their staffs down and turned into a serpent. Moses throwed his down and it gobbled theirs up. I like being there, see, the end of that tail go down in that side. And Moses not only had his staff, but their staff and his snake staff. He can do above more than what you can do. See, he had to pull back and say, you remember when I was working? Remember when I was working over the enemy? Remember what we used was greater. And then, you know, what we have to do is, is get to that place to pull out of the knowledge that we have what God is doing and has done for us. And what, that's a true song, what he's done for others, he'll do for us. He's not going to do for them and not do for us. Come on, somebody. You know. You know, waters, you know, they the one that smited for the frogs and the plagues, all this good stuff. He, he knew that now God was working. You got, we must understand that, that God is working in the night, even in the darkest of times. Uh, you know, God's working when it doesn't feel like he's working. God's moving when it doesn't seem like he's moving. You know, still waters, you know, they run deep. Still waters don't look like nothing's going on. Still waters have currents on the bottom. They moving, can you say amen? Even when it looks still, nothing going on. God's still moving. God's still doing something. They're true. The song that they sang, God is moving. He is doing something. Now listen to me. You know, some of us won't sing up loud and say that because he's not doing what we want him to do. 
But do I have to say that to this side of the crowd? Y'all heard me over. Y'all heard me over there? <laughs> 21. And the Lord stretched, excuse me, the Lord, good enough. And Moses stretched his hand out over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back at a strong east wind all night. The church said all night. And made the sea a dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall on them on the right hand and on the right side. Let me tell you what this morning, that God can do it, get you through. Can you say amen? Now, I want you to know, we, we got some bad rib bones up there where I live. We got some bad kids where I come from. Now, if they anything like them Israeli kids, amen, I'm sure they was running down through there and skimming their finger in that water. I know I would. Said, boy, how'd you get your sleeve wet? I don't know. I imagine they were throwing rocks in them. I imagine some was looking in for fishes. Well, sure, these are people, can you say amen? And there were some going. And there were some being. I'm sure. You know, they had to drag them out. You know, you know they had to drag them out. Lots of people had to draw them out. I mean, you know, they had to drag them out of there. Can you say amen? When I say pray for your kids, drag them out of there. Pray for them. Amen. And they went over on dry ground. You, you know, and, and pertaining to the Red Sea this morning, I want you to stand with me this morning. And pertaining to the Red Sea is, is type and shadow of the new life in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? Let's see what the Apostle Paul said. And this morning I want to tell you that God's in the midst of your mess. Amen. Just hang on, do your best, pass that test. Can you say amen? Amen. Hey, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. I'm getting close. 10, 1, and 4. You know, the parting of the Red Sea in, in the New Testament it, it is a symbol of the believer's identity in the death, burial, and resurrection. So, so when you talk about the children of Israel going on the other side, when you talk about the children going through the other side, you're talking about something supernaturally has happened. And his name is Jesus. How many of y'all believe his name is Jesus? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. He said, uh, I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brethren and sisters, that our ancestors were under the cloud, and they passed through the sea, and they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock <laughs> that accompanied, accompanied, accompanied them, and that rock was Jesus. I want to let you know you can't go anywhere without Jesus. I want to let you know you might think you're on your own, but you're never on your own. I want you to know that, that, that a little less complaint, a little less assumption, a little less fear. And let's go through the other side. Let's, let's go in. Now, not everybody's going to run up through the front. Not everybody's going to come easy. Not everybody. You know, it, it may not look easy this morning. It, it, it may not feel like you can get through it. But let me tell you, I've never found where it's truly ever really just easy. But I know that God is doing what God does. And in the midst of our mess, are we passing the test?